just like the weather, the global environment is never guaranteed to be on our side. But unlike natural weather events that are powered by unavoidable forces, we have the ability to seek solutions to economic uncertainty through collective action. In this regard, I very much look forward to hearing the, hearing the insights and outlook of our experts on the U.S.-China trade dispute, as well as the measure that can be utilized by the governments around the world to prove any adverse impact on the global economy. And it's hard to tell whether or not it did have an effect. Some, some members, some senators who uh, were opposed to Trump's tariffs lost, uh, notably uh, Claire McCaskill, Senator from Missouri, Heidi Heitkamp, Senator from North Carolina, they lost. Uh, the pro-tariff candidates won in many districts uh, where the tariffs were hurting business. So it's hard to tell whether or not people are, you know, what the election map looks like. Remember the, the districts are it's, 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 it's this area that's, that's soy. What you see is Iowa, it's a pretty solidly Republican district. Uh, it's the first and third district of Iowa flipped to Democrat. Uh, and I think we've seen a couple more flip to in, in the updated data since, since I was able to put this, this uh, presentation together. But what we need to see is more uh, dissatisfaction in this region here if we're going to contribute this to the um, So this is my takeaway that really mm -hmm. the, the fact that the House is Democratic doesn't do a whole lot in terms of Trump's prosecution of the trade war with China. One of the reasons is that there is bipartisan support for that trade war. I think in the past 10 years, the, 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 the attitude toward China in the United States Congress has been drifting toward the more security-oriented, hawkish end of the spectrum for the past de decade or so, since the Great Recession. Uh, and there, there is bipartisan support for getting tough with China imposing tariffs, threatening to impose tariffs, protectionism is generally the, the viewpoint of the Democrats. It hasn't really been a Republican Party uh, position uh, over the past couple of decades, like they have in my opinion. I have Chorus 2.0 here because the administration, uh, just like the NAFTA, sees Chorus 2 and the NAFTA as signs of their successful trade policy, so if the Democrats want to stick a finger in the eye of the, of the administration to deny him the success, they might stand up and try to do something. But the president, the administration sees chorus as not something that needs to be submitted to Congress. They see it as a revision of the original chorus because there are no laws that need to be changed in the United States. We'll, we'll see whether that's the case. Uh, one of the provisions in the new chorus is the extension of the truck tariffs, another 20 to 141. To me, that might require some sort of congressional consent, congressional action. So if the Democrats want to get involved, they, they could possibly. Uh, and basically, I'm not trying to criticize one particular country or one particular government or one particular administration. The, uh, the global protection is the problem. So the protectionism uh, is the main reason for this particular situation. Uh, and I don't believe that it's fair to criticize just one country, say United States or China or other countries for that matter. I guess the, 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 the erosion of the leadership of the WTO or multilateralism generally uh, is the root cause for this particular problem. And uh, what we are now seeing is just the, the, the application of the problem in the particular context of the U.S. domestic politics. And U.S.-China disputes are continue to rise, and it seems that, uh, uh, that uh, the disputes will, will intensify uh, in scope, uh, and in variety, and in intensity. Two countries are trying to settle the disputes, but as I say toward the end of the presentation, uh, it seems that the differences are not really some minor differences over some textual basis of WTO agreements or some, uh, some, some, uh, some legal disputes or legal differences of a particular topic in anti-dumping investigation or countervailing duty investigation or some other topics. Uh, rather, the fundamental differences between the two countries are about, I would say, rather structural.
or even philosophical, say, what is the scope of the intervention of the government in the private market? Or what is the, what is the reach of trade agreement uh, in, in, in terms of overall economic policy? Uh, I think there are fundamental differences between the United States uh, and China when they look at the same document of the WTO agreements or same document, a particular doc agreement. They have very different views on these issues and I don't believe those issues, those differences will evaporate sometime soon. So probably two countries will try to settle an agreement sometime soon because doing so would be beneficial. Uh, we can see that toward the end of November or early next year but with that, still, uh, it, it's likely that the differences will emerge again and confrontation will flare again.